Let's take a look at another of these generic fan controllers from China. These are designed for retrofitting the existing circuit boards in three-speed fans with this sort of pan function. Uh, I've looked at one before that had an interesting remote console and a remote control, and it was just generally more sophisticated. It also had the facility for the uh, water pump feature for things like the sort of air coolers where they use evaporative cooling. Uh, this one is super minimalist. It's only got an 8-pin microcontroller chip on it. And I thought, we'll start this off. I've put some neons on it. Uh, we'll start off by trying it out and taking a look and seeing what it does. So I shall bring up the anti, which is better at the lower loads. And I shall hook these wires in. And I've already connected some neons onto the outputs. And I'll zoom down in this so you can see it closer. Things worth mentioning about this, it has the infrared remote on a little ribbon cable. But keep in mind, if you ever get one of these and experiment with it, that this is all live at mains voltage. The whole thing is effectively live at mains voltage because of the way it works. So if you mount the infrared detector somewhere, just keep in mind it has to be out of finger reach. I shall bend that to the side. It's very springy wire. And I shall just focus down a little bit onto... Here. So I'll plug this in and it makes a slightly wobbly noise and shows a power consumption of approximately 0.6 watts and a miserable power factor of 0 0.03 because that's using a capacitive dropper in a, in a very basic way. Uh, 75 milliamps, which would be about 18 watts if it was being measured as real power. Now here's the typical crinkly bag you get with these. With your remote control, I'm not sure how visible this is going to be. I shall turn it on. And this uh, first fan uh, control neon has lit up. If I press the button again, it switches on the uh, next winding, which is a faster speed or lower speed. I'm not really sure which way it, it works with this. Uh, and then you've got the uh, other setting. If you keep pressing that, it will just keep toggling through those channels. If you wanted to swing backwards and forwards, you press swing. And this uh, channel here just turns on and off. It's a simple synchronous motor used to swing the fan backwards and forwards. It also has an off button here. Uh, on, and then it's got off light. I'm not sure what off light does. Nothing, apparently. Uh, it also has a timer function. I'm not sure how you'd know what the timing is, if it's just going to time out after X number of time, or if every press is a certain chunk of time. There's no data on this. It's just basically you get a, a schematic on the box, which doesn't relate to any of the... None of the pictures actually relates to this particular circuit board. And the other feature it's got is a mode where it will actually cycle between the fan speeds, including off. So it will just keep stepping... Uh, through different fan speeds, just the fan continually ramps up and down. So it's toggling that on and off. And if you press this, it switches in the second option. So it, it's now going sort of like medium speed, low speed and off. Then press it again, it starts doing them all. And it basically just steps through, so the fan's continually ramping up and down. I don't know if there's any other feature. I think that's more or less it. Right, tell you what, I shall unplug it. And we'll explore the circuitry. And by virtue of the fact this is a beer module, I've been able to actually take pictures of it already. So we'll cut straight to the pictures. I shall zoom out a little bit. And bring in the first exhibit, which is this. So we have the little microcontroller and it's using every single pin. We've got a power supply based around this area here, which is a capacitive dropper, an inrush limiting resistor, a Zener diode, probably about 5.1 volt. Uh, it's actually got a little red LED under there that runs at very low current, but is useful just to indicate it's on. I think they just added it because they could. Um, it's got the little peeper, which is a impedance of 15 ohms, resistance of 15 ohms, and a capacitor in series. We've got the output to the infrared sensor, and we've got four little tiny triacs with uh, their base resistors there. Uh, if you want to do a bit of reverse engineering yourself, that is the front 
and this flipped over is the back of the circuit board. Let's take a look at the schematic for this. Quite an odd schematic. Um, I've drawn it a slightly different way than I wanted to because normally I'd have the common zero volt rail at the bottom, but in this case, the plus five volt rail is the common rail. And uh, the zero volt there is actually, well, it's really, I should have said zero volt and negative five, but I thought that might be confusing for people who aren't really familiar with the sort of concept of a common positive rail. And the reason it's a common positive rail is because the triacs are switching to the live here. So they've made that. Uh, and also the triacs are more sensitive to being switched negative than positive. So that's why they've done it this way. So here's what we've got. We've got the neutral and the common for all the motors. We've got the capacitive dropper here, but there is a 220k resistor across that as a discharge resistor. That is really low. 470k would have been much better. Uh, with 220k, let me just calculate this. With 220k, I equals V, which, uh, say, let's pretend it's Chinese voltage, 220 volts, divided by 220k equals 1 milliamp times 220 volts equals 220. So it is actually uh, on a UK supply, it would have just been on the edge. That resistor would have been right up at its rating, but as it is, it's 220 milliwatts. It will get quite hot. So there is a capacitor to limit the current. There's a 22 ohm resistor as a sort of basically almost like a fusible resistor, but also a surge limiter. And then there's a couple of diodes here. Now, the reason there's a couple of diodes is because you can't just put a bridge rectifier after it if you've got one leg of a capacitively powered supply running uh, directly while it's switching. This leg is effectively AC. So what they've, because the capacitor needs to be charged and discharged in each half cycle, when it's being effectively discharged, uh, the current flows to the circuit. And when it's being charged, it just bypasses uh, straight to the other leg of the mains. There is a capacitor here which is charged up by that those that portions of current that come through and then there's a 5.1 volt Zener diode to clamp that to 5 volts. There's a little LED and it's high value resistor just so it doesn't, it just barely glows, it's fine, it's bright enough, uh, it doesn't need to draw much more current and in this case they don't want it to draw much more current. Uh, so the 4K7 is going to be, say, it's going to be less than a milliamp for that LED, it just makes sense. There's a little decoupling capacitor for the infrared detector and the microcontroller just tied across the 5 volt rail. And then for the beeper, there's a 1 microfarad capacitor in series with the beeper, but it's interesting to note that on the circuit board they've also got the option of a larger value capacitor, 2.2 microfarad electrolytic, presumably, um, to make that effectively more current. It's going to make it a sort of louder beep, but again, they don't want to draw too much current. That's why it's just short pulses of beeps. And then there's the triacs. There's four of these. There are Mac 97A6 triacs. And as mentioned before, the 330 ohm gate resistor, it's pulling the gate negative because with triacs, you can have the uh, gate positive or negative with respect to its main sort of like the MT1, the main control pin here. I shall label that MT1, MT1, main terminal one, main terminal two and gate. But it is, uh, of all the four options you have of uh, the gate being positive or negative with respect to the uh, main terminal here, the most sensitive ones are when it's going negative. So that's why they're, they've got this common to the positive rail and it's being pulled negative. And that is more or less it. There is one other picture to show you, though. Uh, the motor incidentally the three windings you've also you've got three taps along the winding plus there's one section of the winding then goes to a capacitor so that no matter which one's powered it causes that phase rotation uh, the other thing i've got here is the inside of the remote control it's very basic it is the most basic it's a blob chip it is the infrared led the three volt power supply from a couple of uh, aaa cells and there are two extra button positions, so it's a universal remote, but, well, this one, the off-light one, is 
uh, not used. So I would guess that those probably aren't, I can't think of any use it would have for them. It's interesting to note that to give better adhesion onto the circuit board for this conductive ink, they've got the standard screen uh, solder resist, but also they have a sort of almost like a, an extra layer so, uh, screen printed on under those uh, conductive buttons, presumably just to give it better adhesion as opposed to trying to uh, screen print the actual conductive ink directly onto the, um, onto the solder resist. And that is it. Um, not really much else to say about that. They'll probably be on a scanned matrix, I'd guess, just to minimise the pins, unless there is just one per per button, but I don't think there will be. It'll be a very minimalist approach, and then it's just driving the LED directly. It's, there's no current limiting. It'll be built into this chip as well. But that is it. It's a very basic, simple controller. The only th concern I have about things like this is that if something went wrong... And uh, more, one of these tracks was to fail in an on state. Effectively, that shunts a winding of the motor and it could cause problems. I don't know if that's ever... Well, it will be a problem at some point, somewhere. But um, it's like it's not probably a major issue because it is fairly low current, the whole thing operates at. It's just designed for fairly low power fans. Uh, anything else worth mentioning about this? These terminals were absolutely terrible. They just... Uh, they didn't want to take even a flat blade screwdriver very well. And you have to, before using them, I'd recommend loosening the terminal and getting a pin, like I used a meter probe, and just poking it down the end because it's got those horrible leaf springs inside, the leaf contacts that are best pushed up before you put the connections in. Uh, it does have other uses. If you wanted to control a light, you could just control a light from this swing output and the other ones if you had something else like you wanted three loads um, you could theoretically just switch between those loads with with this so it's not just purely dedicated to controlling a fan but there we have it uh, it's another of those interesting universal modules with the sh equally universal box it says points to note first make sure the load is not short circuited this is good uh, one end of the two motors of the swing motor fan motor is connected with the common end of the circuit board. The other end is connected to interface corresponding to the circuit board. Make sure there are no connection errors before power on test can be performed. And that's it. Interesting little circuit. Very basic, very minimalist, almost pushing the microcontroller to the limit in terms of its uh, ability to handle a noisy power supply. But, uh, but a functional little unit that must probably be finding its way into many fans around the world.